Hey everyone, my name is Cassie Feld and welcome to my YouTube channel, Upcycled Adulting, where I am here to help you upcycle your real life into your best life. Do not forget to subscribe because you don't want to miss a single thing. I'm talking consistently about habits and goals and obstacles and relationships and all the stuff going on in your real life and how to make all of that better, how to level up consistently. And y'all, you need to know that you deserve to live the life that you have been dreaming of and that it's possible. Today, what I want to talk about is your identity. So I have been talking about how do you find your purpose and your passion, right? How do you know what that dream life even looks like? Because a lot of us, we really don't know. We're very, very busy. We're going through the motions of everyday life. This is especially common with moms. And we've kind of lost touch with who we are, what we want, what our purpose is, what really matters to us, and where we think we should be. In addition to that, sometimes we're dealing with a lot of mom guilt and a lot of fear about doing new things. But I've talked a little bit about how do you find yourself and reconnect with yourself. And the number one thing I talked about was making space for yourself and accepting yourself. And I wanted to do a deep dive today about what that looks like, where we're really missing it there. Because part of why we struggle to show up well in our own lives is that we are not making space for ourselves. We are not being kind to ourselves. We are not allowing ourselves to see all of it, right? Either we lean into seeing the stuff that we don't like, the stuff that we're ashamed of or embarrassed about or are fearful of, or we lean into seeing ourselves as perfect, as idealized in some way. It's very difficult to see these are the great things about me and these are the things I'm struggling with, right? And when you think about it, you can kind of think about it in the way of a job interview and they ask you, what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? And usually when we say our weaknesses, our perfectionism, what that means is I can't take a really deep look or make space for my weaknesses because my weaknesses scare me. My weaknesses make me feel like a failure. My weaknesses are, are holding me back and I, I can't look at them. I can't look at them. It's so fragile and painful and I feel like a complete failure or a complete mess. I feel like my weaknesses will swallow me whole. Those weird things, the things that I'm ashamed of, the things that I tried to hide, those will swallow me whole if I look at them. And I understand this because I am that person. I was raised to be perfect, to be good to do all the right things, to meet all the expectations, to be invisible, to fly under the radar. A lot of people in my generation were. And then when we grow up, we feel totally confused and lost and alone, and we feel very ashamed of parts of ourselves. See, I actually am going to tell you this. I'm an introvert. It took me a really long time to affect, to embrace and make space for the fact that I'm introverted. I'm also neurodivergent and I've been masking my entire life because I felt like if I was introverted, people would see me as cold or as arrogant or as unapproachable. I felt like people would pry into my life and dig. And I was very, very ashamed of the degree of social anxiety I had. And I wouldn't tell anybody. And so I would show up and just look bubbly and look like the life of the party and put on all of that armor and all of that makeup and all of that facade. And it really impacted all of my relationships. It made it so hard for me to connect with other people. And I was presenting something and I was not doing this maliciously, but I was pre presenting something that wasn't real because I was afraid that if people saw how introverted I am or how, how much social anxiety I have or how how difficult I find social situations that they wouldn't want to be around me, that they wouldn't want to invite me, that they wouldn't engage and that I would end up alone. But what ended up happening is because I presented this really bubbly, vivacious, extroverted person, 
the people I got in relationships with were the same way. They were genuinely extroverted, generally bubbly, genuinely, they wanted to do all of the stuff. And they would invite me, but because it was exhausting for me and I didn't have the energy, I couldn't keep up. I couldn't go. And over time, because I'd created connections with people that I was so different from, the relationships would fizzle or suffer. And I would end up feeling guilty because I knew what was happening, right? And so I was preventing myself from showing up as who I really was, from embracing who I really am. And so the thing that I want to say about how this shifted and what made the biggest difference for me, and I know it will make a huge difference for you as well, is just getting curious. I just took the time to be curious, not judgmental. Okay. I started treating myself like I would a friend. I started treating myself like a person that I just met. And I started just getting curious, like if I just meet somebody and I want to get to know them, I'm not looking for everything that they're saying wrong, wrong. I'm not judging them. I'm not looking for flaws. I'm not looking for problems. And if they tell me something that doesn't really resonate with me, I'm not like, wow, okay. I don't do that. I do that with myself. And I started embracing the idea that I'm unique. I started embracing the idea that being weird might be good. That some of the things that I think of as weaknesses, other people might actually see as strengths. That I couldn't find my people. The reason I was struggling in relationships is because I couldn't find my people when I was pretending to be a different person. And I didn't know how I was pretending because I couldn't make space for real me to show up. Get curious encourage yourself to be weird, encourage yourself to try new things, encourage yourself to have a growth mindset, encourage yourself that when you know better, you can do better. And so if you find out that you struggle with something, you can actually make adjustments. You can actually equip yourself or you could just embrace it and be like, that's just my thing. That's just my thing. I'm just weird like that. Listen, y'all, I actually clean my house for enjoyment. I'm just weird like that. I actually enjoy doing it. It's a hobby. I really like it. That's weird. I know that's weird. When I tell people that, they react like it's weird. I like watching documentaries about the microbiome. I'm fascinated by it, really. Okay. I know other people think it's weird. But some of you are probably watching this and you're like, me too, me too. Listen, I'm a Gen Xer and I can barely text, but I would way rather that you text me than call me. But if you call me and I pick up my phone, I will keep you on the phone for at least an hour. Can't help it because I'm weird that way. I don't want to go anywhere, but I definitely do want to be invited and I feel really excluded and lonely. Oh, and I'm not because y'all, it's just how I am. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm terrible at bowling. I am awful at bowling and I'm a night owl. And I've tried for many, many years to not be a night owl. And then you know what I realized? I just am a night owl. And you know what I did? I created a schedule that works around me being a night owl instead of rejecting it, instead of trying to force myself to be something else. You see, you cannot figure out who you are or find yourself or lean into your identity or show up authentically as long as you have created parameters that say, no, you can't be that. And if you are a mom and you are raising kids and you are telling them, no, you can't be that, you know that you have a problem. You know you have a problem. If you are telling your daughters that they can't be hockey players and your sons that they can't be nurses, you have a problem. If you are telling your sons that they can't play with dolls and your daughters that they can't play with dump trucks, you know you have a problem. But we do it to ourselves all the time. You're not trying to force one of your kids to stop being a bookworm and to be more social. You're trying to get them to embrace that that's something that they love and it matters but you're not modeling that to them. 
And if you don't model it to them, if you model to them that it is okay to just flat out reject parts of ourselves, it is okay to hate parts of yourself and to try to try to hide them and to create shame around them. They're going to do the same thing. They're going to do the same thing. So if you have some oddball hobby or some oddball trait or something that is just not super socially acceptable, or you're awkward, or maybe you're neurodivergent, maybe your focused area of interest is dinosaurs. Maybe you are 40 and the only thing you want to talk about is dinosaurs. That doesn't make you wrong. It doesn't make you weird and it doesn't make you bad. And you don't need to ignore that. It's important to start showing up in life as who you are, as who you are, to start pursuing the things that matter to you, to find your passion and your purpose and to show up full out as you, because you're the only you that there is. And you, you deserve to live an authentic life, one in which you wake up every day feeling purposeful and fall asleep every night feeling proud. And you cannot do that if you don't even know who you are. So stop rejecting parts of yourself. It's not all going to be right. It's not all going to be perfect. It's going to be messy. And you can actually reframe that and embrace it as a beautiful thing that is part of being human. Okay? Because no one is authentically showing up as perfect. Okay, no one is. There's like a literal series of basically thriller movies that were made in the 70s about this, right? The Stepford Wives, The Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Listen, okay, stop trying to be like everybody else. You be you, because that's what matters most promise you. If you are struggling with this, this is the exercise I want you to do. And consider doing this weekly. Consider doing this until you break through that protective shell that you might actually have over yourself. Get a piece of paper, set a timer for 30 seconds and write down every word you can think of about yourself, everything you can think of about you. Okay. Just freely write. You'll be surprised at some of the things that you find. I was really surprised to find the word socially awkward on mine. I was surprised to find things like insecure, scared, hypervigilant. Those are all things that are true about me. All things that are true about me. They're all things that now that I know about them, I can work on them to improve them or I can embrace them because y'all there's literally nothing wrong with being a socially awkward night owl just putting that out there okay who's a old soul and loves to crochet and clean house all right yeah got it weird I know you don't have to tell me in the comments I already know so embrace who you are make room for that person stop judging yourself don't forget to subscribe. I am all about helping you build the life that you've been dreaming of because the truth is you are amazing and you do deserve it. Bye everyone.